Today we are in, of course, the book of 2 Kings in the Old Testament. In 2 Kings, the focus here is on the northern tribe of Israel and the southern tribes of Judah. It is speaking to us about their success and their failures. But in this particular chapter, number six, it begins and opens up by speaking to us saying, the sons of the prophets said to Elisha. We're familiar with this because it was just four chapters earlier where the transition was made from Elijah to Elisha. The key to it was Elisha had to see his master when he was taken up. I know many people say, well, that's easy. All he had to do was look up. But there was a whirlwind, a wind, and it was hitting their eyes. And he had to maintain vision even when something was deteriorating him from seeing. You're going to have to learn how to still see when life is impossible, when it's not easy, when it's not comfortable. And so these sons of the prophets said to Elisha, remember it was just a few chapters earlier, they were saying to him, do not stay with Elijah because he is getting ready to die. It's amazing how in one season people will be negative about your life and in another season attach themselves to you after they see your success. When they saw the success of Elisha, then they wanted to follow Elisha. Never be excited about followers because followers come with conditions. So now we see in the text, they say unto Elisha, please notice that the place where we live under your supervision <laughs> is too small for us. They had outgrown their living accommodations. They said, do you not see us? And the man of God did not see their physical because he was too busy being spiritual. And sometimes we are disgruntled because our leaders do not see our physical situations. But they're not to. He was not called to see their physical. He was called to guide them spiritually. And in guiding them spiritually, they made their request known because they had grown under his leadership. Growth automatically brings pain. Remember when you were a size three shoe? How did you know? How did you know that you needed a size four? Your feet began to hurt. Remember when, when you were a small in a shirt? How did you know that you needed an extra large? That button didn't fit the same anymore. Pain is an indicator that growth is not taking place but has taken place. Place. Stop seeing pain from a negative vantage. And in their pain, they said, we need more room. Not only did they say they needed more room, but they identified the place that could house them. They did not leave it to the man of God to say to them where they needed to go. They already had a place, but they did not have permission. They had availability. They had ability, 
but they did not have the authority to move on their own. And many times because we have ability, we make decisions and we move based on what we're capable of doing without seeking spiritual authority and find ourselves in the right place under the wrong spirit and wonder why it's not going well. Right place, wrong spirit. And so in the text, he says unto them, as they say in verse 2 unto him, please let us go to Jordan where we can each get a log and build ourselves a place to live there. Remember the term Jordan, the name Jordan means descending, which signified that the waters of Jordan flowed downwardly. So when they had to cross Jordan, they had to cross waters that were pulling them in a different direction. And many times in life, you're going to have to cross things that is trying to pull you differently than where you're trying to go. Never worry about what's trying to pull you. Worry about what you want to pull you. I've never gotten in trouble with things I didn't like. You, you can't get me to eat broccoli. Never got in trouble with broccoli. But a German chocolate cake? You, you will never, never get me in trouble um, with a pineapple upside down cake. Won't, I can sit there and watch you eat it, not bothered. But oh, give me a sweet potato pie. I'm in trouble. We never fall victim to what we don't like. We fall victim to what we like. And everything we like is not godly. Okay, it's okay to admit that. It's, a, it's really okay to admit that everything you like is not godly. It's falling into it. That's the problem. So, so we see here in the text, he, they say, can we go? We can get a log. We can build ourselves a place to live. And the prophet said, yes. And the prophet said, go. He gave them permission to do what they asked. Then they said, well, don't just leave us there. Can you come with us? We don't want to miss you being with us because you represent the presence of God. The voice of God for our lives. So when you see the bearer's sport, Although they are in human form, just like you and I, they represent the voice of God for Serve City to speak into your life the things that God would have for Serve City to do. And who wants to move without God? What a tragedy if you do. But in verse number four, I'm halfway done. So he went with them. And when they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. They were able to do what they had planned to do. How many of us in our lives have started working on our plans? And they were going well. I'm talking to people who, who had permission. Who has ability. Who have everything going their way. I mean, job. Two years ago, two and a half years ago, the whole world was moving. And out of nowhere, it was a shutdown. Think about it. You went to work. You had your work friends, you had your family, you had co-workers, you, you went to Christmas gatherings, you went to all kinds of stuff. You went to birthday parties, you went to weddings, you had a great life. You were looking at doing some other great things. Life going well. That's what was happening for the sons of the prophets. They were cutting down trees but out of nowhere 
One of them, verse number five, was cutting down a tree. The iron axe head fell into the water. What amazes me, Pastor Beresford, about this text, we never hear about the axe head until it falls. It just says it was cutting down trees. They were cutting down trees. They were cutting down trees. Never talked about the axe head until it's lost because some things are never discussed until it's not available. Right here in the text, he said they lost the axe head. They lost the iron part and all they had left was a handle. And many churches, many People today are moving around without axe heads. All they have is handles. But the tree won't fall because of a handle. You need the axe head to cut down the tree. The axe head is where the power is. The axe head is what the authority to make that tree come down is. And some of us lost our axe head in the pandemic. We lost what made us great in a pandemic. You knew who you were before a pandemic. You knew what you liked to do before the pandemic. But all of a sudden, you woke up without an accent. Let me tell you how dangerous that is. Because I remember me and my wife this July 10th will celebrate 30 years of marriage. <laughs> Amen. And 27 years, my wife got up Monday through Friday went to her job. I, in between that, I taught school. I was full-time ministry. And so my hours were different from hers. One day in the pandemic, do you know what she did to me? <laughs> I got ready to go out the door, and she said, where you going? <laughs> now, keep in mind, for 27 years on a Monday, I never had nobody to ask me where I was going. I need you to hear this because, because all of a sudden there was a shift. I, I was used to her asking me that on a Saturday. But never on a Monday because she was not present. It shook something in me. Because all of a sudden I thought she didn't trust me by asking me a question she had never asked me before on a Monday. Some of you don't realize what's happening, that you're going to have to be honest with God to say something shifted in your life in this pandemic. I know it seems small to you, but that was a big deal to me. I was like, now wait, now we, we don't do that in here now. <laughs> we, we've been married 27 years and... and and she was like, you're just not going to walk out no door. And I said, where well, you're going? I don't know who you think you are. I said, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. We had a big blowout <laughs> on a Monday morning about leaving out of the door because she brought the weekend wife to my everyday experience. Some of you don't even realize that's why marriage is in trouble because nobody sat down to talk about how the pandemic even shifted how y'all operated in the house. Children, relationships with your children have been messed up because all of a sudden you have to be the teacher and you don't know this new math. And children looking at you, Mom, I thought you were smart. Dad, what's wrong with you? You slow? <laughs> what we didn't realize, now all of a sudden we said our children were unruly and disobedient. Wow. That wasn't the case. On, School allowed them a place to mature without you. 
It allowed them a place to make decisions without you. And without going to school, all of a sudden, they were always in a place of listening and responding and following. And so it, it stopped their growth. It stopped their decision making because they can't make decisions at home, but they were able to make decisions at school. And now you mad with the child because the child don't understand why I got to be quiet all the time because from nine to three, I didn't have to be quiet all the time. Lost axe head. Socialization skills were robbed. Relationships were robbed. And you went back to work. And all the stories you wanted to hear about your co-workers, marriage, all of a sudden you were like, I don't want to hear that no more. <laughs> because for two years you didn't have to hear it. So now, do we understand that's a lost axe head? And in here, listen to what happened. He cried out. He who had lost the axe head cried out, Oh, master, it was bound. Here is the reason the church is stuck. We refuse to be honest. How do you think God is going to deliver you if you never, never acknowledge you need deliverance? It makes no sense to go to the doctor. You've been hurting two weeks. I can't move. And get to the doctor. Doc, I'm all right. That's why you went to the doctor. It makes no sense to go to God and won't acknowledge I'm sick. I had to be honest with my wife and I said, it's not that I don't want to tell you where I'm going. But for 27 years, you can't flip me in one day. <laughs> Give me some time to get used to that, my weekend wife being at home every day. So, so you know what happened? She was like, I don't want to hear all that. I said, <laughs> I said God, you got to do something with this girl. <laughs> It was not until she went back to work herself. She called me from work six months later and said, I get it. I'm at work. I don't know what you ate today. I'm at work. I don't know when you go. Or when. I never even thought about it. I never thought about this was a shift for you. All I thought about was you were moving and I was not accustomed to you not telling me when you moved. I didn't realize that for 27 years, I never even called one day and see how you were doing. I just took for granted you were all right. Ooh, see, sometimes we're so caught up in us, we're not even thinking about the person we said I do to. We're going to have to acknowledge that they play a role besides being a paycheck. But that they are a person who feel who you put in a bubble and in a box. And now you shifted the game and mad because they won't play tag. Lost axe head. So in the text, in the text he says, he says, he says, I lost it. Acknowledge that these two and a half years have made you different. Not bad. Just different. I lost family members. I'm not the same. Some of you lost income. You are not the same. They shifted you in a New York second. You are not the same. It's all right even online to say, I'm not the same. I'm not the same. I'm not the same. I, I may have the same type of clothes, but I'm not the same. I may drive the same car, but I'm not the same. I may even live in the same house, but I am not the same. Something shifted. And here's the good news. It's okay. Don't let people make you feel bad because you shifted in the pandemic. I shifted. Now you can either 
get with it or get over it. But I'm not going back to who I used to be. Here in the text. Then in verse 6. I only gave y'all seven verses so y'all know I'm at the end. Then in verse 6. The man of God asked, where did it fall? This, this caught my attention because what Elisha was saying to him, where did you lose it? Do you know where you lost your peace at? Do you know where you lost your joy at? Do you know what, what month it was when it shifted, when you didn't, all of a sudden it was a struggle to do what used to be easy? Uh, let me have a Canadian confession. I got excited being at home too on Sundays. They weren't the only ones who was excited. Me too. I'm still working this thing out with coming back. I, I, went, I went from to once, once a quarter. That's how we started off. Once every three months we came to church. I said, that's too fast to come back there. Then I went to once a month. I just got to four Sundays because I was happy too. I didn't have to worry about the sound check. I could pay people and not have to see them. I had nobody to counsel. I had nobody to marry. And I sure wasn't going to the graveyard. Everybody has shifted. Not only have you shifted, but the barrels forwards have shifted. Have you considered the shift that happened with them? Ooh. He said, where did, where, where, did, where did it fall? Where did it fall? And listen to the text in verse number six. When he showed him the place. Prophet said, here, right here, it fell right here. You, you're going to have to point out some things. You can't just leave everything on God. You're going to have to say, I, I, I lost my prayer when, when my cousin died. Because I, I was praying for them to be healed, and they didn't get healed. And I lost faith in God. I, 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 I heard you, Pastor Beresford, week after week. But you see, when I lost my job, y'all don't know, that was psychological. I, I, my marriage was struggling. And you want me to talk about God is good and we can't even speak to each other. Oh, God. Some of you are going to have to realize you lost something. I know we're shouting. I know we're happy. But we're going to have to acknowledge we lost. And then after he showed him the place, the man of God had a solution from God. If you be honest with God, he'll give him solutions. <laughs> And, and he took, ooh, he cut a piece of wood, threw it in the water where the axe head had fell. And all of a sudden, the iron floated. What was at the bottom was now at the top. I, I'm, I'm trying to tell you that you better expect a turnaround. If you are honest with God, if you are honest with God, if you're honest with yourself, God's going to bring a solution to bring a turnaround. And look what happened. The man of God, Elisha said, now I know you see that axe head. Now you lost it. You pick it up. Ooh. Some of you are still waiting on somebody else to pick it up. Wherever you dropped off your prayer ministry, it's time for you to pick it up. Wherever you dropped off your fasting ministry, it's time for you to pick it up. You were serving in worship and serving in serve city, but all of a sudden you stopped serving, but it's time for you to pick it up. You've been sitting down too long. It's time for you to pick it up. You can't leave it on the Paris forge. You got to pick it up. Don't get stuck where you are. I like you. Pick it up. Look at somebody say, pick it up. You got to pick up your joy. You got to pick up your peace. You got to pick up your love. You got to pick up your ministry. Stop waiting on somebody to pick it up for you. But pick it up. I see why I lost it. 
I see where I left it. And today, I'm putting my hands in the water and I'm picking it up. I've been down too long. I'm picking it up. I've been hurt too long. I'm picking it up. I've been sick too long. I'm picking it up. Somebody say, pick it up. And when you pick it up, God will use you again. That's all I came today to tell you. It's time to pick it up. I know you've been sick, but in the balcony, pick it up. I know you've been depressed, pick it up. I know you've been hurt, pick it up. I know you've been lied on, pick it up. I know you've been talked about, pick it up. I know you drained in your spirit, pick it up. Because when you pick it up, God will turn your situation completely around. So is there anybody here who's ready to pick it up? And now that I picked it up, I'm going to lift my hands to the Lord and give him praise thank you i got my joy back thank you i got my peace back thank you i got my power back lift your hands lift your voice and give god the praise if the lord has done anything for you open your mouth If he saved you, open your mouth. If he brought you out, open your mouth. If he healed your body, open your mouth. If he kept your mind, open your mouth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You've been good to me. Thank you. Been a way maker. Thank you. Been a friend. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If He delivered you, come on, come on, sir. City. I feel somebody picking it up. I feel somebody picking it up. I feel somebody picking it up. Thank you, Jesus. I could have been dead, sleeping in my grave, but the Lord spared me one more day. And since I'm here, and since I'm here, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yes! 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 I should have been dead and gone. 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 I'm still here. You're still here. You're still here. You're still here. You are still here. You made it. All I'm doing is picking it up. Why don't you help me do it in the Holy Ghost? 
everything that's been lost. The devil, you lost again. Devil, you lost again. You thought you had my marriage. You lost again. Thought you had my children. You lost again. You lost. All I do is win, win, win. All I do is win, win, win. All I do, all I do, all I do. Share with me, Pastor Barry Ford is coming. I won a game. Say it in the atmosphere. I won a game. Say it again. I won a game. I won a game. God did it. 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 The Lord did it again. 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 Yeah! Well, you might as well go ahead and give him the thanks. Put those hands together and give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Come on, glory to his name. Hallelujah. We might as well. Can we just hit it one more time before we get out of here? I know that it will. I know that it will be. I know that it will. I know that it will be. I know that it will. Come on. I know that it will be. All right. Come on, church. Put those hands together. Say, I know that it will. Come on. I know that we picking up the axe here. Come on. I know that it will be. I know that it will. Come on. I know. Prophesy. Say, all right. One more time. Say, oh. Say, oh. Hey. Oh. Hey. Oh. Online. Come on. Oh. I just feel a brook out in the spirit right here. God is so good and he's still in control. Glory to our God. Hallelujah. Come on, can we put our hands together for the gift that is Bishop L. Renard Catchings. Thank you, sir, for that deposit. We're so blessed. Ain't that a preaching maniac? Glory to our God. All the way from Atlanta, Georgia, who would come and leave his church, Christ Temple Full Gospel Baptist Church, to come out and preach and bless us. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Man, didn't God do some amazing stuff in the house on today? We would be remiss after such a powerful message if we did not extend to somebody. You're like, why are these people so excited? I don't have that joy in my life. I don't have that peace. I don't, I don't have a God. I'm not trusted in God. I just came here because somebody invited me to come. I just tuned in because someone shared the link with me. You know, and, I, and this is like, what, why are y'all so excited? I, I want to have some of that. But I'm here to tell you that although we are sinners, and although stuff is jacked up at our li- in our lives in many regards, and there are things that have happened in the season past, the amazing thing is that we have a God who put on flesh. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Put on flesh, the same flesh that we are in. A lot of people mad about Christians being down to earth. You serve a God who is the epitome of down to earth. He put on your flesh and came down to earth and lived perfectly because he knew that you and I could 
and would not because of the sin of our first parents that was passed down unto us. And so today, today, we invite you, if you do not have a relationship with God, to begin a relationship with him today. And if you've had a relationship with him, but you walked away, we invite you to come back home today. To begin a relationship, the Bible sums it up in three things. I'm going to say three things. It says to repent. Everybody say repent. repent. In other words, you're turning from serving yourself and Satan and the world and sin. You're repenting. You turn. You turn and you believe. Someone say believe. Put your trust and your faith in Jesus that he came, that he did die. I believe you died. I believe you rose from death. I believe that you are alive now and extending to me eternal life. And then it says to be baptized. Somebody say be baptized. And as you saw those individuals, can we celebrate God again for those today who made those decisions? It's putting a ring on it, going the whole way. You're buried with Christ you identify with Christ's death and are unified with his death when you go down in the water and when we bring you up you're unified with his resurrection now all the benefits that came from him living and dying and rising on your behalf are applied to you when you make this decision and so if you do not have a relationship with God we invite you to do so if you're someone that ran away and you want to come back home Saying, do I need to get baptized again? No, you don't need to get baptized again unless you, or, or unless you haven't been baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You can repent today. You can just say, I'm coming back home. God, I'm sorry for what I did. And as we say, there's room at the table for you. Isn't that good news in this place today? And so today, if you want to begin a relationship with Jesus, or if you would like to come back home to him, we want to invite you, go to the connection card again. The connection card, the links are there on the screens in the house, right there on the screen for you if you're watching. Or the QR codes in the back of your seat. Scan those. Go there. Fill that connection card out with as much info as you're comfortable. Let us know about this decision.